Hey everybody, thanks for clicking on the video. Uh, before we get started, I just want to say please, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. It just gives me those warm fuzzies and helps keep me motivated to share some of these interesting things that I find with uh, everybody online. Now, uh, what do we have today? Well, this is the Adeep Robotic Arm Kit for Arduino. Uh, this, of course, is the build video, as you've seen, where I get to assemble this neat little kit. And I do so, uh, I spread it up about 400%. And before we get too far, I'd just like to kind of share what my thoughts are. Uh, first of all, the instruction manual. Um, my base plate looks nothing like the instruction manual base plate images. So that took kind of a little bit of tinkering to get the alignment right of which one's north, south, east, west when I put everything on there. Uh, however, once I did that, everything kind of fell into place nice and easy. The parts are cut out nicely out of the acrylic everything screwed together. I love that there are little tiny labels on each bag and the screws and nuts and bolts and everything are separated in the bag. That is such a small thing that helps so much when you're trying to find the difference of an M211 or an M2 by 8 screw. And as your this project took me about 90 minutes while watching a football game and doing this, the little things that help save time and effort really come in big time. One of the other really nice things about this kit is there's the option to do a couple different ways of building it. I went for the good old claw hand standard robotic arm like the picture you see on the box. Uh, to me that is going to be what I'm probably going to use it the most with. Uh, there are little pots that you'll see on the board to control the arms and control the servos with five degrees of movement so you wiggle it around and try and pick things up. That's great. Uh, there's also included a pen attachment or a pencil attachment where you could play around with doing writing or recording movements to replay the writing and things drawing and things you've done. Very interesting kind of fun experiments if you want to play around with that stuff. Uh, for me, I just like the grabby grabby holdy holdy, so that's what I went with. The other thing to note really is that these are micro servers, servos. Uh, if you've ever messed with RC planes, you know there's a big difference between the different types of servos that go on different parts of the plane and really different sizes of the plane. These are really small micro servos. So you're not going to be picking up coffee mugs or soda cans or anything like that. Uh, I picked up part of a balsa airplane. I was able to hold that up. Pieces of paper, small things. And just, this is more for experimenting with the programming and the servo driving and a little bit of play with, you know, they even show foam blocks on the box. I mean, that, that kind of stuff. Rather than a working robotic arm where you're going to, you know, do something crazy around the house or the apartment. If you want it to press a button or program it to some simple move back and forth, it'll totally do it. It's, just, it's not going to carry any weight. Uh, that being said, if I take in fit, finish, the instructions, the servos and everything, you know, for a, for a fun STEM kit that I got for less than 100 bucks, I mean, I give it a good solid 8 out of 10. You know, it didn't blow my mind, it didn't blow me away, but I liked some of the things they did, uh, and it was relatively easy to, easy to build. I think anybody in high school, possibly junior high, could definitely do it. Younger than that, you might need some more parent supervision of just doing the, the fine movements and putting in the, like the really small bits and pieces. Biggest key to this is going to be to stay organized and don't lose the nuts and bolts. I mean, some of these things are pretty tiny. They could easily kind of bounce away, especially if you have carpet. Luckily, I'm on hardwood and I've got a magnet. So I, if I drop something, I could just sweep underneath with, with the bar magnet, find anything I drop. All that being said, I'm probably just going to stop talking now and let the video keep playing. Please uh, feel free to pause, slow down. You know, if you're building this and you run into trouble, stop it when I get to the point where you are. Slow it down, use this as a reference. Uh, other than that, I'm just going to go ahead and cut to it, and thank you very much. Thank you. 
Okay, well, that's really about it, other than a little fine-tuning here and there, and then running the cables and doing the cable management. Uh, one thing I want to note that I probably don't show in the video is that the topmost servo, servo number five that opens and closes the claw, does come with a servo extension you'll have to use, because otherwise when you fully extend forward and then out on the other ones, it's actually too long for that servo wire and it becomes a limiting factor and won't let you go use the full range of motion. So definitely use that servo extension. Uh, and other than that, cable management, that's your own deal. You know, figure it out for yourself. Uh, I am terrible at it, notorious. Thank God for zip ties. But all in all, it was a fun build. I really, you know, I think it's a neat toy. I'll probably use it some kind of as a helping hand or a third hand around the desk. Uh, it might come in handy building some balsa planes or working on some other kits. I just want to say thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe, do the usual bits, and uh, have a good night.